And now for the exchange, and we are going to talk more about that WHO conference and what the goals are. Joining me is the Regional Director for Europe, that's Hans Kluge. He says the world now needs to act to prevent a health crisis. And I thank you for joining us uh, the day after uh, really an extraordinary record was broken, specifically on health. As we reach these climate milestones, what will be the impact? How will it affect the quality of life and even mortality? Thank you for inviting me on the program. Actually, the WHO European region is just coming out of the acute phase of the COVID-19 pandemic, where we had 2.2 million people passing away, still 1,000 people preventable deaths a week. And with this, the whole climate change debate has been pushed aside. In September, there's the SDD summit, and we see that we are doing not well at all. Let's take one example. Last year was the hottest summer in Europe ever, with more than 20,000 people who passed away, particularly the elderly and the young people from heat strokes, from hyperthermia. The same goes with floods, with erratic rainfall patterns. So the time for action actually is not now, but yesterday. And when you say it's yesterday, and I take your point about heat stress and it really being a killer, you guys have you know, stated categorically that climate change is already killing people. What can we do in order to sound the alarm here? What can we do immediately? Is an early warning system what is needed here? Well, the climate crisis is what I call a health crisis. So all activities we do to improve or mitigate climate change are good for health and vice versa. What we can do immediately, everyone has a role. It starts with healthy diets. It starts with safe modes of travel, even with 25 minutes of moderate physical activity a day, and then going to low carbon health facilities, because I'm representing the health sector. The oath of Hippocrates is primum non nocere. First of all, do not harm. So we have to do first our own homework. I visited a major hospital yesterday in Hungary, where the conference is taking place, Bethesda. And there, for example, the hospital director is working on a green facility, disinfectants, which are less toxic, a much healthier waste management. So there are very concrete steps that can be done. But first and foremost, the government should give a signal that climate change is to be taken seriously. And when we say taken seriously, you know, Bill Weir was just talking about the fact that in Spain they may start to name heat waves. I know in the Pacific North Northwest, in this continent, two years ago, they had hundreds of deaths because elderly people, and in those areas that didn't have air conditioning, I'm sure that's the case in many parts of Europe and obviously Africa, Asia, you name it. Is that early warning key, meaning bringing up perhaps cooling centers in a lot of these areas and saying, look, it, instead of saying a storm is coming, and in these cases, the heat wave is coming. Prepare. Absolutely. Early warning is good for what we call preparedness of society and the system for all hazards, be it of another pandemic or for the heat wave. And actually, it's part and parcel of the conference over here. But you mentioned Spain. What needs to be done? Well, Spain, for the first time, and the first country, is establishing a special department in the government to measure and to project the impact of such heat waves on the population. So this is a very good example of anticipating, because we cannot wait till all our forests are in fire in Europe or all rivers are being dry. These very practical actions can be undertaken now, and this should culminate into the Budapest Declaration, where the 53 countries of our region will be behind tomorrow. Okay, some very practical steps there as we continue to try and figure out exactly how it's going to uh, affect our health, uh, climate change in the coming weeks, months, and years. Uh, thanks so much. Really appreciate it.